Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video, we're going to be discussing one of the special tests that's used in the assessment of cervicogenic dizziness, and that is the head-neck differentiation test. So to perform this test, the patient will be positioned and sitting, as you see right here in all three of these clips. And for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be playing the role of the patient. The patient is instructed to perform the following components of the test. There's three parts to it each with their eyes closed. So one key here, when this test was originally described in the literature, which I'll link in the description of the video, uh, it is done with the eyes closed. And particularly for two of these parts that you'll see in a minute, it's very helpful to have a swivel chair because the patient's body is gonna have to rotate at a fairly quick rate. And if you're just sitting in a regular chair, it's gonna be very difficult, if not impossible to assess validly. So the first part of this test is the rotational component and this is where we're assessing both cervical and vestibular function. The patient actively rotates their head from side to side without stopping in the middle. As you might imagine it's fairly straightforward rotating side to side like this. Okay now according to the article the rotation should be 45 to 90 degrees in each direction, left and right. And this range here is to allow for differences in neck mobility. A lot of times patients with cervicogenic dizziness also have neck issues, whether it's pain or in a lot of times limited range of motion. So they may not be able to go 60 degrees, but get into that 45 at the very minimum is required to assess this validly. Also, the speed of that rotation should be 90 beats per minute. So if you wanna be really exact, you could get out a metronome, but pretty much nobody does that. And then they should do this rotation for 30 seconds. And of course you're assessing for anything like nystagmus or any subjective reports that relate to dizziness from the patient. So that's part one. In part two, this is referred to in the literature as in block. In block is Latin, that basically translates to all as one unit. And what you'll see here is the actual motion uh, looks very similar to the VOR cancellation test that we covered in other videos. This is where we're totally isolating vestibular function. So there's no cervical component here. Patient rotates at the hips and their lumbar spine and rotates their head, neck, and trunk as one continuous unit from side to side without stopping in the middle. So other than the fact that you don't have the hands out like this and looking at the thumbnail, Again, this is very similar to the VOR cancellation test. And as you can see here, it's gonna be very useful to do this in a swiveling chair. Now, in a similar way, the rotation here should be between 45 and 90 degrees each direction, but the speed here is gonna to drop to 60 beats per minute. Again, I don't know anyone that pulls out a metronome and does this exactly. In fact, if you've actually tried to do timing with patients, it's actually easier said than done. A lot of patients that you see have absolutely no sense of rhythm or time. So again, 60 beats per minute, take it or leave it. But the duration should be 30 seconds for that component. That's part two. And then finally, part three. This is the meat and potatoes of the head-neck differentiation test. So this is the torsional component. This is where we're gonna be isolating cervical function, okay? The PT will stabilize the patient's head and she's gonna be playing the role of the PT here. And the patient is instructed to rotate their body from side to side without stopping in the middle. You can see that right here. My head is not moving. That removes vestibular perturbation. So vestibular is not at play here. But because my trunk is moving relative to my head, there is neck movement. And that's how we isolate that cervical function here. Now the rotation should be 45 to 90 degrees each direction. And just like the, the, the rotational component of the test, part one, if a patient has limited neck mobility, uh, this may also be just as much of a problem, okay? So again, to really validly assess this component, they need to have at least 45 degrees of relative neck motion. Also, the speed is 60 beats per minute and the duration is 30 seconds, just like we saw with part two. Now, what constitutes a positive head-neck differentiation test? Well, think about it. We're assessing cervicogenic dizziness, okay? So to be considered positive for cervicogenic dizziness, which of these three parts should elicit the most symptoms? Well, it should be, it should be the part that isolates cervical function. So in general, if a patient reports that dizziness and or dizziness-related symptoms are greatest in part three, 
compared to parts one and two, that is considered a positive test. Now, depending on the degree of the dizziness, the patient could still have some dizziness in some of these other test positions like number one or number two. However, to be positive for cervicogenic dizziness, those symptoms have to be greater in part three, the torsional component. Now, one word of warning here before we conclude the video. If you're going according to the literature and you're doing this as rigorously as possible because you want as much validity as possible when you're assessing with this test, you need to do all three of these components. And that makes sense given how they define a positive test. However, note that in practice, a lot of times they just don't do parts one and two and they'll only do part three, which we saw down here. And a positive test in that case would be reproduction of dizziness or dizziness related symptoms. But understand that if you want to be rigorously valid and, and really rule in cervicogenic dizziness, assuming you've ruled out other causes of it, you need to do all three of these parts and the dizziness in part three would need to be greater than that in parts one and two. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the head neck differentiation test and how to apply it. Please make sure to like my video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification button for notifications for all videos in the future. Thank you so much.